Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, visiting Parkway Subaru. And I'm checking out a 2019 Subaru Forester in the Sport trim level. This Forester is sitting on 225, 55 Falcon tires, wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Crystal White Pearl. And it's a cloudy day today, so it just kind of looks like a regular white. When the sun shines on it, you can tell it's a more of a pearl coat. So looking here in the front, the center portion of the grill is a gloss black with the Subaru emblem. The bottom portion has that orange accent with a matte black. And that goes around the vehicle, around the fender wells, around the base of the side, and in the back. Around the fog lights, it has a combination of matte black and gloss black. And the fog lights are in an LED. They're powered by LEDs and a reflector housing. Headlights are LEDs as well. And they are in a projector tube. So what they call it, they call it as a bifunction LED. So in other words, it low and your high beams are out of the same tube. Your turn signals are standard bulbs though. So looking at the profile, the door handles are body colored, the upper portion of the side mirror is body colored, and they have the pillars all blacked out with the privacy glass here in the back. Now if you were to tint the front glass, it will solidify all the glass. I think it'll look really nice. So the wheels, being gloss black, go well with all the black accents. Now, I, I picked the white vehicle, so that way you can see the contrast here, because all this stuff kind of blends in uh, if I were to choose like a black or something like that. So the roof rails, they stick up quite a, quite a ways there, and they have a little bit of the orange accent on the underside of those as well. This is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key system designed where you can keep this in your pocket and use the vehicle 100%. Now it does have uh, buttons here, lock, unlock, the ability to open up or um, unlock the, the hatch and a panic button. So this one has a sticker still on it, but it's overall, it's a smooth, fairly light for its size, uh, key fob that seems to be easy to carry around with you. So let's go ahead and see what the horn sounds like. All right, so it has a physical key on the inside in case you need that. And the physical key location is here on the driver's side only. Now using the key, as long as this key was, is in your pocket, in your bag or whatever, as long as it's within a close proximity of the outside of this door within a few feet, you can lock the doors by putting your finger over the sensor indicated with the, by these little lines here. So you put, just kind of put your finger there and it'll sense the key, sense your hand position and lock the doors. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle senses your hand position there, and it gives you access to the vehicle. I turned the side mirror out because it has an approach light there, and it will illuminate when the vehicle senses the proximity key. So to give you an idea of when the car senses, how close you have to be in order to um, use the proximity key on the door, um, I have the key with me right here. So we're gonna walk up to the vehicle and you just watch that side mirror. So now it's illuminating. So you have to be just within a few feet of the outside of the door in order for the proximity system to pick up the key. The doors go all the way down to the bottom of the sides and they even have seals at the bottom of the doors here. So you can see that and this keeps the inside of the door jam is relatively clean, so that way, it, you know, getting in and out, you won't dirty your clothes or whatever, so that's nice. Okay, so the inside is really nice on this. Looks cool and has textures and different things to check out. Okay, so here's the inside of the passenger side door. You notice mostly black. It does have this gray right in here, and this, this is actually a cloth material. And then you have the contrast stitching and a French design looking pretty nice. And soft touch here, cloth there, 
up here this is a hard touch down here's a hard touch but uh but this is kind of like a this is kind of like a rubberized type material the, the the different materials feel really high quality you also have a pocket this this grab handle is also sealed up so you can use it as a pocket and then you have the pockets at the bottom for a bottle or whatever And check out the seats, they're quite a ways off the floor, so that way you have that chair stance for comfort. And check out those seats. So you have this, uh, like a synthetic leather here on the outside, and then you have the cloth in the center portion with this contrast stitching everywhere. Looking pretty nice. These are heated seats, two-stage heated seats. The dash has that rubberized feel, soft to the touch as well. Locking glove compartment, smooth plastic on the inside. It has a big sunroof, we'll check that out later on. The rear door swings a little bit wider out, it seems like, than the front. Because it is a smaller door, so I guess that helps out with getting in and out. Pretty much a very similar styling here in the front. I mean, here in the back as the front. Even has a little sport label. Soft touch here, here. This portion is a hard touch plastic, uh, unlike the front. Other than that, it's about the same. Then you have that plastic threshold guard there protecting getting in and out of the vehicle a little bit of a hump here in the center rear vents that's nice with two charge ports USB charge ports and the back of both front seats has two pockets so you have one actually they're set this bottom one separated so that way you have here here and then this larger one here it's pretty nice. So the back seat is basically a bench seat, but you can fold the, the back portions down to add to your cargo space. You have armrest with cup holders and a little bit of a hump there in the center. So center passenger will have to deal with that. But overall, fairly roomy and comfortable. Fuel door is here on the passenger side, so you can have the passenger pump the gas for you. And it's locking, so right now it's locked. You unlock it. It also unlocks the fuel door. So now we're access, accessing the fuel door is, uh, you're able to do that basically when it's unlocked. Okay, so it has a traditional cap, tether, and a place to hang the cap here on the inside of the door. Okay, so looking at the back of the vehicle, here at the top, is a little shark fin antenna body colored right here you have a rear uh, a third brake light here at the very top powered by leds and the privacy glass is surrounded by gloss black kind of obscuring the the difference there so you have standard bulbs for your tail lights and the backup camera for some reason is offset slightly offset Little bit of a difference here in, in the centering of the camera makes a difference as far as your you know visuals backing up in my opinion, but uh, it is not too bad, but it is offset. Parking sensors across the rear bumper. And the bumper itself kind of has a little bit of a maybe you can say a carbon fiber look. It just has a little texture there. And nice looking exhaust here on the right side. Let's check out the cargo area. So under here, you actually have a light in which you can have turn on or off. So you can have it turn on with the door or off. And then you have a hanger here.
Okay, so here's your cargo space. So right now it has a shade in, in, in place. It actually has two portions of the shade, so you can move that back. And then you have another portion right up there that fills in that little gap. I'm not sure why that's a separate portion or why you'd want to have that. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is, but that's the way it is. Now you can take this completely out. You can also fold the seats down and have a huge cargo space back here when needed. Um, but right now, I'm gonna show you, it has a net pocket. It has like a Berber carpet, uh, sport mats. Also this one in particular has the rubber, uh, rubber mats here as well as a rubber cargo mat. So you have all those options there. You have some bag holders here on the right side, little storage space there. On the left side, you have a 12 volt power supply, two more bag holders, storage space there as well. You also have tie downs here and as well as in the front. Here's what it looks like without all the mats in, in the way. It's just a flat surface. You can see the tie downs a little bit better. Lift this up and this is where you have some more storage space. You can also store, you see it goes under there a little bit, this, uh, the shade actually is, you're able to store it in here as well. Under this, you have your spare tire and tools. It's a full diameter tire, not full size necessarily. It's not like the tires that are on it, but it is full diameter. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle to start it up, you just put your foot on the brake. You notice when I put my foot on the brake, a little green light turns on. So now we can push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice these little hooks right here. That's where the floor mat hooks in place. You have the accelerator and brake pedal there as well as a footrest. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there is a latch a little bit to the right of center, just underneath the emblem under here. Let's so reach in, move it to the left, and lift up. So you can see the latch right there. Now the hood's fairly light. It does require a prop to hold up. Here's the prop here, and it swings up, and you have two positions. You have this one where the arrow's pointing, but there's another one down here that you can put the prop, that, which lifts the hood way higher than normal. Like that. You see how much higher that hood is? It's like almost completely straight up. So you can see on the underside of the hood, it has, a, has some insulation there, and it has some seals around the outside edge of the engine compartment. Helps with noise is also airflow. Firewall is insulated. Also the strut towers, right here is the top of the strut and uh, it's braced in. So you can see underneath that plastic there is actually braced in with the vehicle. The battery is easy to get to here on the right side and it's also insulated. It's a big plastic cover covering up the engine, but there is an engine, it's a boxer engine. So basically, it, you can call it a boxer or also a, a horizontally opposed engine. So basically, you have, it's a four cylinder engine. So you have two cylinders facing that way, one, two, and then you have two facing that way. Okay, so they're completely away from each other. So that way you have two separate cylinder heads uh, that separates the the heat, so it's easy to dissipate heat. Uh, also gives you a lower center of gravity. Uh, there's quite a few benefits of this particular design. It does have a full aluminum engine block for weight. So the intake is on the top. So the air goes in the ins in there and it splits. And you can see the edge, the plastic portions right here going to the top of the cylinder heads. And the exhaust is straight out the bottom. So that way the heat is dissipated under the vehicle. So that's another benefit. Also check it out, oil filters right there. Isn't that nice? Uh, but anyways, so this is a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, has direct injection, 16 valve, and it's a pumps out 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque. I'm gonna put all the you know, specs and dimensions and 
all the crunchy numbers in the description so you can check it out if you're that type of person that wants to dig into that in depth. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. So you have your power window controls here. The front two are automatic, one touch down, one touch up. Now, while I got the, uh, the window down, you'll see this in a test drive video, which is a separate video and I have that linked. Your blind spot monitor indicators are right here on the inside of the side mirrors. And this is your little approach light that we saw before. Side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side and there's your door lock controls. So you just pick a side and you can adjust it like a little joystick. So the driver's side has the power seat. So they're, the driver's side seat always one-ups the passenger. So not only does it have the power seat, it also has the power lumbar adjustment. So you can go up, down, forward and back. It's like a dentist chair, get in position. Very comfortable. To the left of the steering column, you have a few buttons here. For one thing, just out of curiosity, if you want to know, this is a fuse box cover here. Okay, so these buttons, you have your traction control off, default will be on. Default on will be your stop start feature. Now you can turn it off here. Now, during the test drive, me and Nathan talked about a way you can turn it off permanently but you have to watch the test drive video to figure that out. It's kind of a little bit, a little bit of a trick. So if you're, that's not a feature that you, you, you want on, then watch the test drive video. I'll have a link in the description. And then here is your blind spot monitor system. You can turn that on or off here. And then you have your dimmer switch for your interior gauges. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column, which you lock in place here. So you release it and secure it. Okay, so sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. Um, I have the seat all the way back and all the way down. And I'm six feet tall, just to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. So, you see, and I, I would actually probably have, yeah, I'd have the seat a little bit further up. It's a little bit too far back for me to drive. Um, but you can see the potential is there. So you don't have to worry about... Uh, you know, if you're really tall or whatever, you should have plenty of room. So looking at the steering wheel, it has that stitching on the inside like you see in the rest of the vehicle. And it's a leather wrapped steering wheel. Has that traditional leather texturing. Then you have the synthetic material on the inside matching it. So it has pedal shifters on the back and here on the front on the right side there's your cruise control now it has the adaptive cruise control in which you can set the d distance between you and the vehicle in front of you also has the lane keep assist as well once you turn it on you can set resume change your speeds set your distance and also turn your lane keep assist on or off you also have a sport mode which will give you different options here so you can change the different, so this is like your torque curve. Uh, so you have this one, which is a rapid torque curve and then it stables out. And then you have the other one, this more, it climbs slower. So depending on your, what you would like, this is something you'd see uh, like on the, the STI or something like that. So there's your buttons for that. On the left side, you have your volume for your radio. You can change your audio source change through tracks or radio stations depend on where you're at and then your Bluetooth controls you can answer hang up and also the, your voice recognition for making calls and then these buttons here they correspond with the screen between the gauges which we'll get to in just a minute windshield wiper controls are here on the right side turn signals on the left you also have your headlight controls so you have off automatic parking and headlights and this is your fog lights. Okay, so looking at this, the, the gauges here, it has a black background, very clear, large white lettering. It's easy to read, easy to focus on, especially focusing from the road to the gauges. So that's all good. You have your RPMs here on the left, speedometer on the right, but very in the very center here, there's a screen 
in which it gives you more information. At the very top, it gives you your miles per gallon. So as you're driving, uh, kind of gives you a little gauge there in what you're doing. At the very bottom, you have your fuel econo uh, your fuel gauge. Even has a little arrow showing you which side your fuel door is on. What gear you're in. Uh, at the bottom is your odometer, and at the very that right that above number there is your trip. So there's actually two trips, and you can reset it right here. And you can you push it to cycle from A and B, and then you push it and hold it to reset each trip indep independently. You can have the second one still going. But right here in the center is a digital speedometer. So that's what it's showing now, but you can get some more information. Uh, you remember these buttons down here? We're gonna cycle through. So I'm gonna use the up arrow. I can go up or down right now, but right now I'm gonna go up. So right now it's showing you a distance and timer in which you can reset. Scroll up again, this will give you your miles per gallon and your distance to empty, how long you can drive before getting fuel. Up again, gives you your average miles per gallon. So right here you have um, basically two of them. So average, you have two different averages, so that way you can keep track of um, them independently. Go up again, this will take you to, into settings. I'm gonna go past that for a second. This is your tire pressure, which, is, which it will show while you're driving, not sitting still. And uh, this is your what's going on as far as your stop-start feature, how much fuel you're saving, and how long it's been turned off. All right, so let's go back down here to the settings. So we press and hold the center button, and it takes us into the settings. We have screen settings. We can change the units, so kilometers per hour, miles per hour, that kind of thing. Um, warning, we can go into eyesight, the warning volume, um, just different vehicle settings right here. I'm just going to quickly go through them there. But So that's your settings. Uh, my default screen would probably would be the digital speedometer i'm used i'm used to that so that would be good for me but you can see once you get it set up you don't have to go in all those settings and everything all the time it's just there in case you need to but generally it's a very simple and easy to read layout and easy to to understand while you're driving and that's the most important thing okay so there's a little information screen here at the very top above the touch screen. So that's not a touch screen over there. It's just the information. So as you're driving, you can quickly glance at this screen and it shows a digital clock, outside temperature, what your climate control is doing, also what's going on as far as your vehicle. So if you have your cruise control on, so let's go ahead and turn that on. And it'll go ahead and give you some information, a visual information here. So as we set the diff distance between you and the vehicle in front of you, not only will it show up there, it'll also show up here. Uh, so you can set the distance here. Also your lane keep assist, you can show that that's on or off. So it's gonna show you that information here on the screen too. So as you're driving, it would actually show uh, like vehicle a representation of vehicles in front of you, uh, that kind of thing. So it has to do with your eyesight, your lane keep assist and your cruise control. So I turn the cruise control off. So now we're looking at, uh, like say the parking sensors, lane departure warning, forward collision warning type, type things. Um, also, you have the automatic high beams. It's just basically showing you what's going on with your climate control and your vehicle. So it's a, cl a, cl a quick reference, visual reference as you're driving. So it's not that low from, from the road. Okay, so that's, I think that's a good thing. So down here is your touch screen. And right now it's in the home button. So if you're, it's in the home position. So you push the home button, this is where it takes you. Now you can add to these icons using the different apps here. Right now this is the only, you see there's three dots. There's only uh, these icons here. You also have physical buttons below it, including a physical volume knob tuned through the stations. So you can access the home button and all these right here, radio, phone, and apps quickly. Um, using the physical buttons. It also has a CD player in here, which is interesting. So you can pair your phone. Uh, let's go into the radio, because everybody associates this with the radio first. So it is a radio, it has AM, FM, satellite radio. You have your presets there at the bottom and your visuals there as far as what's playing and all that stuff. 
and you can go into different media sources in addition to the radio so you have CD USB Bluetooth uh, you also have the auxiliary input so there's a different options there and the apps so this is where you can go to your Apple CarPlay Android Auto actually once you plug in your device and you have it set up it's gonna automatically pop up anyway um, but in case you wanted to you know have these readily available to where you can you know turn switch back and forth from other things while you have your device plugged in uh, you can have those icons available Pandora travel link which is a really good uh, feature easy to use um, as far as you, let's go into it because it's not something it's not easy to explain um, so one of the things in travel link is you can find a the nearest gas station you can find um, you can sort it by price you can sort it by brand uh, you can also uh, check the weather and see what's going on. So if you're if you're not in a, if you're not in that area in which you're familiar with, try not, trying to find a gas station sometimes is a hassle. But this is a, a quick way of doing that. Also ch keeping track of the w uh, weather and uh, just different information here with Travel Link. So that's a pretty cool feature. Also, Subaru Starlink, uh, this is a feature that goes on your cell phone. You can actually remote start the vehicle and different things using that, uh, that app. So that's something you want to look into if you're interested in it. And the, in this particular one, the only navigation would be through the um, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. All right. So looking at these buttons here, you know, like j these are j basically redundant buttons down here as well. So that, you know, media goes to media, radio, and all that stuff. And then you can change through different audio sources. And pairing your cell phones, very easy, near-field near communication. You just put your device there if it has that uh, capable. And you can, it starts the pairing process anyway. Four -way flashes are here. And then you have your climate control. So you have your temperature, your fan speed. And turning this dial will change where you want the, the air to blow. And... So as I turn this, it pops up here on this top screen. So I can, when I adjust the fan speed or the temperature, it'll show up on the top screen there. And it goes away when you stop messing with the buttons. Also, you have your front and rear defrosters and your automatic climate control, all that stuff here. And below this, in here, which has a nice little blue light, that's pretty nice. Uh, this is where you'll find your USB and auxiliary inputs as well as a 12 volt power supply. And a little storage space there with a rubber grippy portion to the bottom that you can take out and clean and put back in is what it looks like. Okay, so here's your shifter. And I like this material. It's kind of like a rubberized material here with a stitching. You see that throughout the vehicle. Okay, so here's the shifter. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can see, the, see what the backup camera looks like here. So your parking sensors are on. It also has active guidelines. So you can see them turn as I turn the steer, steering wheel. And this will um, give you an estimated trajectory as you back up, basically. But look at the clarity of that. You can see, like, the cracks in the... And the pavement and everything it's pretty good clarity it also has automatic braking so as you're backing up if you get too close to something and it's pretty sure that you're gonna hit something it'll st it'll automatically apply the brakes which I thought that was pretty neat okay continuing on there's neutral drive and then you have a manual mode in which you can use the paddle shifters so once you put it over here you can see what gear you're in at the bottom so as you cycle through the paddle shifters you can see what gear you're in you can always go back into the drive and let the vehicle take over uh, shifting. All right, so this is a electronic parking brake. So you can gauge it and it's the rear wheels that engage. And I, I had an old Subaru. This is a really old Subaru. Front wheel drive, not all wheel drive Subaru. And the emergency brake, it was a hand parking brake and it applied it to the front wheels. So that was interesting. So it releases there. 
and then it has a uh, like a brake hold feature here so as you come to a complete stop it will apply the brakes and, and hold you there to keep you from rolling forward uh, and you can have that on or off here so this is the way like you don't have to hold the brake the whole time it'll just hold it for you you have two stage heated seats for the driver and passenger and your X mode. So this is for your all-wheel drive system. So if you're in uh, snow or deep snow or dirt or, or mud or whatever, you can change that. Um, pushing it in will bring have you a normal, basically a normal mode. But as we turn it, it gives you this visual reference up here. So it depends on what you're what you need. You also have it here, kind of lets you know what's going on. And push it in, and it goes back into the normal mode. Cup holders are here with a little storage pocket. This actually is removable, so you can utilize that space for more than just cups. Or if it has a, you know, like a handle or something like that. Okay, so the armrest, soft to the touch, it bottoms out to right about there. And it, I don't think it's really wide enough to share with the passenger. I'd probably hog that all up. Nice stitching though. So let's go ahead and lift this up. It snaps in pretty good. doesn't flop down. It stays right where you leave it. That's all good. Has places for wires to go in and out of the compartment here. Has this little tray that's removable. Check it out, it has a little place to put your license or something, something there at the very bottom. That's pretty neat. Okay, so in here, dark, dark. It's hard to see in there. Does have a 12 volt power supply. Let's go ahead and turn on the night vision so you can see in there um, so there's no lights or anything so 12 volt power supply it does have a, a little felt liner in the bottom but um but yeah i think they should have a lighter colored uh, so like i say they have a, a light the the felt liner like a like a beige or a white or something so that way it reflects some light in there so you can find something but anyway that's what it is Rearview mirror has an auto dimming. It's actually an auto dimming rearview mirror. Has a digital compass here it is in it as well. You can turn that auto dim feature on and off here, and then you have your home link garage door opener controls here on the bottom here. So up here you have some tap lights, both sides. Uh, remember the lane keep assist? Well, that keeps you within your lane this is a road departure warning so if you're gonna like fly off the road it'll give you a warning uh to kind of wake up or whatever so you don't fly off the road also a forward collision warning system as well this is for your sunroof which we'll get to in a minute there's a little ambient light which is nice right now i have the headlights on so you can see that when you turn it off it all goes away um, and then you have a emergency roadside assistance information here that you can get somebody if you need to uh, also, you can turn on all your interior lights uh, with the door. So if I put it over here on door, open up the door, it turns on the lights. You can have that feature off if you want. Then you have a place to put sunglasses. Now this is huge. So if you have the really big Hollywood sunglasses, this would be perfect for that. Okay, so the visors, they have a mirror and light. A little clip here also has an extension so you notice some some visors slide out okay which all that does is shift the 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 coverage this one actually adds to the coverage by having a slide out portion so you maintain this coverage and you add to it right there Okay, so let's look at the sunroof. Now the sunroof is a large sunroof. It goes all the way back and it has a shade that covers up 100% of the light. So we can slide that back manually like so and look how big that is. Awesome. So let's go ahead and move it back. I'll put 
push it again it goes a little bit further back I'm not sure why when I pull it forward it also brings the shade with it which is nice so looking at the visibility in the back one of the things that I noticed in in the test drive which will be in a separate video you can check it out I'll have a link in the description um, is the visibility is fantastic so it kind of looks like the headrests are kind of getting in the way but if you're looking over your shoulder it's just just even on a gloomy day today like it's all cloudy you can see really well so I was impressed with the visibility and of course you have all the safety features added to that as well all right so there you have it 2019 Subaru Forester thank you for watching Thank you to Parkway Subaru here in Wilmington, North Carolina for allowing me to show off another awesome vehicle. And I'll see you guys next time.